In this video, we're going to look at how to multiply and divide rational functions. First, we're going to look at multiplication. And multiplication is exactly the same way we used to multiply regular fractions. So A over B times C over D is just the tops multiplied and the bottoms multiplied. And then you could reduce if necessary. So let's look at a simple fraction example. We have 2 over 3 times 5 over 9. We're just going to multiply the tops. So we have 2 times 5 over 3 times 9. And then we're just going to multiply those. So 2 times 5 is 10 over 3 times 9, which is 27. And your answer is 10 over 27. This one's nice. We didn't have to actually reduce it at the end. However, that's actually exactly how we're going to do rational functions. We're just going to have to actually deal with the variables. So now let's look at one with rational functions that actually has some variables in them. So we have two functions. We have f of x equals 4x to the third over 7x minus 1. And g of x is 3x plus 5 over 2x. Now, whenever you're looking at multiplication of rational functions, division, addition, or subtraction of any of these, one thing you always want to keep in mind is that domain. So we're going to find the domain of these two functions, the original functions, before I actually deal with the multiplication. And in this case, the domain of this first function is 1 7th. And the domain of the second function is x cannot equal 0. So we're going to keep those in mind to the, for the end when we look at the final answer of this um, multiplication. Now we're multiplying them. We're going to put them together just like we put our other fractions together. 4x over 3rd divided by 7x minus 1 times 3x plus 5 divided by 2x. Then we're going to put them together. So we're just going to multiply them straight across. Now notice, I kind of wrote it so that you can actually see when we're going to be able to reduce things. When you're multiplying things, you do not have to put them in the same order that they're multiplied. 3 times 4 is the exact same thing as 4 times 3. So when you, you have some creative license in where I actually put them to make it a little bit easier on yourself to see what you're actually doing. So now that we've got them put together, we actually have to reduce it. Notice the 3x plus 5 and the 7x minus 1, I can't do anything with those. They're not the same. I cannot reduce them. However, the 4x to the third and the 2x, I can. 4 divided by 2 is 2. x to the third divided by x is x squared. Resist the urge to cancel out the x here with anything up here, because this is in subtraction and it's one term. You have to cancel the whole thing together if you're going to cancel that out. Where this was a multiplication, that's what allowed me to actually simplify that out. And the final thing we have to do is come up with our domain. Now notice, the only thing left on the bottom is at 7x minus 1. So you might think my domain is just x cannot equal 1 7th. However, since this is a combination of two functions, we need to keep both parts of the domain from my original functions. So my domain of this problem is it cannot equal 0 or 1 7th. All right, let's look at a one a little bit more complicated than this that we actually have to reduce some fractions out and actually cancel some variables out. So we have f of x equals 35x squared minus 25x over x squared minus 36. And g of x is 6 minus x over 15x to the fourth. Notice right underneath it, I have the domain of both of my functions. In this case, x cannot equal positive or negative 6. And in this case, x cannot equal 0. When I put them together, I'm going to put them together the exact same way as I put them together before. I'm just going to multiply them together. I put parentheses around them. And now, since we're multiplying and we're going to be reducing, we really actually want to completely factor out my problem. Because when I get it into factors, it's multiplication. It'll allow me to simplify down the problem a lot easier. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to factor all these parts out. So this one right here, I can factor out. I get the 5x plus 7x minus 5. That's right there. Now, notice one thing I did here. Everything else has the x first, except for this parenthesis right here. So there's a little trick. If you factor out a negative sign, you actually can switch the two parts. So by taking out the negative sign, I actually made this positive, which allowed me to move it to the front, and actually made this negative, which allowed me to move it to the end. So now I have the x in the front, which is going to allow me to see that it's exactly the same as one of the ones down the bottom. Again, I put the 15x to the fourth in the front, because I wanted to be able to see those two things on top of each other. 
and I factored out x squared minus 36 to x minus 6 and x plus 6. Now you can see why I wanted to actually get that x minus 6 up here to be that way, because now I have them on the top and the bottom, and that's going to allow me to cancel those out. So if we look down here with the, with the reduced fraction, the x minus 6 is gone. I've canceled those two out right there. So we were able to cancel out that and that. And in the 5 over the 15, that's 3, and it stays down the bottom. The 15 was bigger. And x over x to the fourth is x to the third, and again, stays down the bottom because that one was bigger as well. Notice I keep the negative sign up top, and I leave the 7 minus x minus 5 in parentheses. I could distribute the negative sign to get rid of the parentheses if I chose to, but there's no real need to. And again, down the bottom, I left the parentheses there as well. There's no real need to distribute that part back out. Let's look at our domain. The domain is all the restrictions for my initial functions, the x can't equal plus or minus 6 or 0. So as you can see, the, prop, the concept stays the same when we're multiplying regular fractions as when we're multiplying rational functions. However, they just get a little more complicated because we have to actually factor things out and they're not just whole numbers. Now let's look at division. Division is again, same thing as dividing regular fractions. A over B divided by C over D equals a over b times d over c. Remember we flip over the second fraction, get the reciprocal of it, and that's how we multiply it. So we have ad over bc. So here we have another simple problem, 3 fifths divided by 4 sevenths. And the first thing we're going to do is take that and flip over the second fraction. So we have 3 fifths times 7 fourths. Put them together, 3 times 7 over 5 times 4, which gives me 21 over 20 actually the exact same thing we're going to do with our rational function. Since we can change it back to multiplication, it's going to make my life a lot easier, and it really doesn't cause us to actually remember any more steps. So here's my two functions I'm going to divide. So 6x squared divided by x minus 3, and 4x to the 7th divided by x plus 1. Again, I have my domains. x, divided, x can't equal 3, and x cannot equal negative 1. And I put them together. So here's my two divisions. And then by switching over the second one, now I'm going to be multiplying. So now I'm back to the exact same steps we just spent in the last couple problems when we were dealing with multiplication. We're going to multiply straight across. So you get 6x squared x plus 1, 4x to the 7th x minus 3. And now we're going to reduce it. We're going to cancel stuff out that's the same. So we end up with 3 times x plus 1 over 2x to the 4th times x minus 3. One thing on division that we didn't have when we're looking at multiplication is, is that domain actually changes. Because if you think about it, we took the second function and flipped it over. So now I have a new domain. I have a new restriction because I have a new denominator. So my domain restrictions from the initial two still stay. Can equal 3 and can equal negative 1. However, I have a new restriction now because this right there, if I plug in a 0 to that, that whole bottom is going to be 0 again. So I also have to add the restriction of x cannot equal 0. So as you can see, dividing rational functions is very similar to multiplication of rational functions. We just have a little bit more work to do with our domain at the end. And that's our lesson on multiplication and division of rational functions.